Uh, her clear at the transom. Copy. Uh, bridge copies that. So calm today out there. Sorry, what did you say? I think we're fighting a little bit of current coming starboard bow to port, to port quarter. Yeah, uh, yep, that checks out. Okay. Um, we can increase speed if you're... Whenever possible. Okay. Karen, can we uh, have Atalanta on so I can do a yes. camera check? Yeah. Thank you. So that's... All your cameras on. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Can you zero all the reps? Yes. So tether and okay. Yes. Okay, both are zeroed. Thank you. All stations, that's Atlanta clear of Nautilus. Van copies. Bridge copies. Okay to turn on sooner? Yeah, do it. Did it. Okay, this is a audio slate for dive number Hercules one nine nine nine. UTC time is 021300. Mark.
which looks shockingly good. I was supposed to say that. It's like, where'd, where'd that weird rock go? Oh, like, there, there it is. is. There but it is. Like, before it was like, yeah, wiggly. Crossed over and. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. No, that's not uh, great, but still, it's not. It's still not as bad looking. Yeah. Deck frog is not looking too good, though. I guess I haven't finished. Uh, <laughs> Launch procedures, yep. <laughs> Copy, all five zero. We'll uh, take it from here. Okay, coming down. Coming down. What speed are you trying to go for just now? Okay, no worries. Are we happy to hold, hold the ship here? Yeah. Great. Bridge nav, uh, we can hold position here. Hello, four to eight. Hello, back row. Hello. Hello. Go Hello. ahead, bridge. Copy that. See you later. Samantha says we're diving, so we're diving. We're diving. We're diving. Hi. We're diving. Actually, I should go to thumbs down, actually, because we're diving. <laughs> we're, we're diving. Thumbs down. <laughs> Onwards and downwards. <laughs> Onwards and downwards. I love that. Hi. So hello, everybody on the internet. Thanks so much for joining us on this dive. Uh, this is a four to eight crew. We have blue water again. Um, <laughs> we'll see where the conversation takes us today. Uh, this is Brittany speaking, one of the science communication fellows here on the EV Nautilus. This is dive H1999. We're going to party like it's 1999. Okay. Y2K is coming up. Coming on up. Next dive. <laughs> I think you meant H2K. 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 <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, yeah, so this is the four to eight crew. We're expecting to be uh, at the maximum depth of 2,500 meters. So my guesstimate is it's gonna be an hour and 15 minute descent. That's my guess. Our bottom time is uh, expected to be about 20 hours. So as usual, we do have watches where we take turns every four hours, we switch out. But we're gonna be streaming that whole entire dive live. So again, all of our on online viewers, thank you so much for coming on with the, coming along for the ride. If you have any questions or comments on the way, as always, please feel free to leave those in the chat. So there is a box that should be underneath or next to your live window. And you can type in something and send it to us and we'll try our best to address it. OK. 
good. That okay. is all we have right now. I'm gonna have that print song stuck in my head the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Could be worse. Karen, you're getting a shout out from Marty. Oh, All right, thanks. Light on Zeus. Cool. So as we're making our way down, um, Again, we never know what we're gonna be seeing along the way. So we call this period of the dive blue water um, for quite obvious reasons. We are seeing some mighty blue water. Uh, we never know what we're gonna see in this blue water. So sometimes we can see jellies. Um, I think we've seen tunicates, siphonophores, lots of little critters. Um, if they are going slow enough, we'll try our best to take a look at them. But Again, we want to try to make it to the bottom to get to our exploring. So we are exploring a northwestern edge of the Johnston Atoll region. And just like the other dives that we've done so far this cruise, we're taking a look at the biology and the geology aspects of this area. So what kinds of things are living down there and what do the rocks look like? And how old are they? <laughs> if I can put it in the simplest forms. Somebody is asking, at what approximate depth will blue water be dark? Excellent question. Um, we are not going to be experiencing any dark water because Hercules, the ROV that we're using, is equipped with many, many flashlights. And so the light around us is always gonna be illuminated. We're never going to see, um, I shouldn't say never. We're not gonna really see the water looking too dark because again, it's quite illuminated with Hercules' flashlights. But if we did not have flashlights, I would expect that we would experience total darkness 200 meters? Two to 200 to 250, yeah, somewhere right. between there. Depends on exactly where, but that's when we're in contact with the seafloor, we start seeing um, photosynthetic organisms between 200 and 250 meters. Very cool. So if you're wondering how deep we are right now, we have just passed 200 meters and descending. So 221 meters to be exact. And the water temperature currently is 18.8 .8 degrees Celsius. So once we hit the bottom and we give you a temperature update, you'll definitely notice a humongous difference. Um, definitely a lot colder in the depths. <laughs> How many Nautilus t-shirts does everyone own? <laughs> I have two. I'm a newbie, so I, I only have two. I don't know about all of our seasoned. It's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> Too many. That's astute, that is an astute question. <laughs> that, like, that shows some real insight into yeah. what's happening out yeah. here. <laughs> Gabby Definitely was off at SPL, but Gabby said that was a very astute question. Oh. What were you saying, Samantha? You I, I, I feel like that, that question is really astute and shows like a great insight into what's happening out here. <laughs> yeah. And I was just going to say that every year it's more and more. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And they go th like it goes through like fluctuations. Like I moved once and lost my whole collection oh, that yeah. went back to like 2009, and then I started rebuilding. I have untold numbers. Untold. Uncountable by <laughs> science. <laughs> Treasure is untold. Archaeology awesome. will look Thanks. back on my closet one day, 
and wonder. Hey, Veronica, thanks for joining us. All right, so should we go ahead and do our round of introductions? Yeah. Let's, Let's do it. Leave. Let's do it to it. So again, I am Brittany, Brittany Munson. I am a science communication fellow visiting from the California Science Center in Los Angeles. So at the Science Center, I work as a senior educator um, doing lots and lots of informal education. So we have guests of all ages that come to the Science Center and we do all kinds of science activities with them, exploring lots of different science topics. Um, like I said, I'm an informal educator, so I don't necessarily have a curriculum and give out grades and things like that, and I really, really enjoy it. And I'm lucky enough to be one of the few chosen to get a chance to have a fellowship on this amazing ship. So, very excited to be here. And I'm gonna pass it to Nick. Wait, no, no, before I do that, I do have a question um, for all of us. If you feel like answering, feel free to do so as you introduce yourself. But the question for today is, if you could meet a famous person, who would it be? Do they have to be real? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excited now. <laughs> uh, my my person does happen to be real, though. Um, there are a lot of people I would like to meet, but as of late, I've been listening to a lot of Cleo Soul. She's a really, really, really talented musician that I really admire, and a lot of her songs have walked me through a lot um, recently. So I would yes, absolutely love to meet her someday. All right. Nice. All right, tossing it to Nick. Okay, uh, hi everybody, my name's Nick. I am a geologist uh, working on a master's degree at University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I study hotspot volcanism. Um, we look at the uh, chemistry and ages of these uh, seamounts to, um, to uh, reconstruct plate tectonics uh, history. Uh, and I would say if I wanted to choose a famous person, um, I'd have to choose probably a scientist. Um, I, I'd have to think a little bit. Can you come back to me on that one? I sure can. Right. But while you're thinking, we are already getting questions questions in the chat about rocks. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. No <laughs> rocks. Get started. Say. Yeah, let's get started yeah. early. Um, so, what minerals are usually in the rocks collected? Yeah, that's that's a fairly easy one to answer. So these rocks are uh, mafic in composition. They're igneous rocks. Uh, so mafic rocks just means they have higher um, magnesium and more iron content. Uh, the minerals that you find in these mafic rocks uh, are typically um, olivines, uh, calcium rich plagioclase, uh, and amphiboles. Um, so those are just kind of general descriptions uh, of, of minerals. They could also have um, you know, minor inclusions of other minerals, but, but those are the primary minerals that we're going to be looking at, and um, uh, biotite as well. Um, the uh, plagioclase and biotites are uh, particularly useful in making age determinations, and uh, again, we're looking primarily for igneous rocks. Um, yeah? How about it? Excellent, thank you. So, igneous rocks. And then somebody wants to know, is there a chance to find a megalodon skeleton in the bottom question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, question mark. <laughs> so very, very eager to find a, a megalodon skeleton. Um, most likely not. So sharks actually have a cartilaginous skeleton, so they don't fossilize, but good news. Uh, was it last year when we found the meg megalodon tooth? a fossilized megalodon tooth yeah. at the bottom. Um, and that was around the Johnston Atoll area. So perhaps not a skeleton, but maybe a tooth. We'll see. You never know. And is there a measure for the range of visibility in ocean water? All I know is something called a sucky disk, but I, there, I'm sure that there are other methods too. Does anyone else know? 
how to measure the visibility of ocean water? Oh, yeah. So um, the Seki disk is good for um, sort of telling how far you can see into like the upper layers of water um, when you've got like ambient light. Uh, but there's another way that you can measure just how much light gets through the water, even when there isn't any ambient light, and that's called a transmissometer. Um, that will, a transmissometer has a little light that comes out of one camera lens, or it has a laser, sorry, I should say, that comes out of one side and a camera on the other side. And it knows, it's calibrated to know how much light it should be getting if there's nothing in between the laser emitter and the camera and it measures how much less than that it's getting. It gives you a percent of um, total transmissibility that you could get through that water. And then there's a whole bunch of other sensors that we can put on vehicles, uh, photoactive, photosynthetically active radiation sensors and things like that that measure certain bands of light getting through the water. That would be light, that would be more on the, um, on the side of like measuring ambient light how much it gets through the water column that's very useful for if you're trying to figure out how much light uh, phytoplankton might have access to um, to actually photosynthesize um, but that doesn't give you none of that light gets down to the deep ocean where we work so a transmissometer is probably the only thing that is an active sensor that i've used um, that would be useful in the deep ocean excellent thank you so much gabby mm -hmm. good to know and then last question before we move on to the rest of our introductions. Are fellows able to reapply for another expedition? Uh, yes, they are. So again, I'm a science communication fellow and I do know that they have lead science communication fellows as well. And just all kinds of opportunities to get involved on the EV Nautilus. So if I'm not doing this fellowship, <coughs> I can maybe apply to be a data logger some other time or uh, try my hand at maybe doing some video engineering or something like that. So very, very hands-on, very uh, collaborative on this ship. Um, yeah, so lots of opportunities to expand. All right, so Steve, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Steve Oskovich. I'm a watch lead. A seat for four to eight and the biology science lead for this expedition. I am a postdoctoral researcher at Boston University where I study uh, the biodiversity, biogeography, uh, and a little bit of genetics about uh, deep water corals we find in this area of the Central Pacific. Um, so a lot of my research right now focuses on creating reference libraries for deploying eDNA tools in the deep benthos settings, but um, I'm also really interested in, in the biodiversity and taxonomy of deepwater corals and how they're related to each other. Uh, I could probably think a little bit more about this, but I think it might be pretty neat to have a conversation with Darwin and just kind of like, so yeah. how have things gone for you the past few hundred years? Yeah. Or hundred years or so. <laughs> I think there's people in the 19th century would be really blown away by what we've done with you know, evolution. Yeah. I think you'd have to go with Isaac Newton, mm -hmm. one of the smartest human beings to have ever lived. Cool. All right, we got <laughs> Darwin, Isaac Newton, and Cleo Sol. <laughs> 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 All right, Bronwyn, would you like to introduce yourself and answer the question if you choose? Yeah, so my name is Bronwyn. Okay, I'm from Kauai in Hawaii, and I am the ocean science intern aboard the ED Nautilus for this expedition, NA 153. I'm in charge of data logging when we're in the water and the ROV is diving, and assisting in the wet lab when we retrieve the ROV and in the data lab after processing samples. Um, at home, I am interning with the state's Department of Land and Natural Resources Wildlife Program. So I work under the Nene, the Hawaiian goose, and the seabird biologists and help with banding and monitoring and surveying birds on Kauai. And I think that I, if I was going to meet somebody from history, uh, 
I can't think there's an artist. Her last name is Keen. Well, her last name wasn't Keen. Anyways, there's a movie about her, Big Eyes, and that woman, I would meet her because she has a cool story. She, uh, she was married to this man and she was doing all this art and he was taking credit for her art and she like essentially let it happen and then there was this whole lawsuit about where she fought that he was taking credit for her art so it's a very cool story and she was a very strong woman yeah i saw that movie it was really really good yeah mm -hmm. margaret keen margaret keen uh -huh. yep and i have one of her prints and it's my favorite piece of art that i have oh, awesome you have to show it to me later All right, uh, intermission to answer more questions. Is the red, green, blue tape on the frame on camera channel one related to color and white balance? Logan, I feel like you might be able to answer that. Yes, yes it is. Um, yeah, that's basically so that when we do the white balance, when we're underwater, we can tell whether or not our color science is off. Um, it's basically just, yeah, a secondary check. Um, and again, when you're down below, blue light comes through, but red light is the first one that you lose. And so we, yeah, we have those three to just make sure that we're getting sufficient light across the color spectrum and so that we're making sure that when we are white balanced, our color science is the way that it should be so that we get quality images. That's a very astute question too. Yeah, we have a very astute audience this evening. <laughs> We have to try to hold it together for them. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the first few minutes. I know. There's plenty of time. Um, all right, Samantha, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, Samantha Wishnick, uh, navigator, also the operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust, which is the nonprofit that operates Nautilus. Um, hi, Mom, by the way, who's watching. Uh, I really want it. Well, my f the first thought when you asked this question was a uh, Loch Ness monster, which is <laughs> neither person <laughs> nor real. Nice. So we'll go with um, Jean Beret, who's a who was a um, a botanist in the seven in mid 1700s. Um, she was she snuck on board a um, botanist a botany naturalist expedition as a man, um, dressed as a man, and um, remained. Uh, on the ship for as long as it took for the ship to circumnavigate. So she's considered the first woman to circumnavigate the globe. Um, and she was involved in a lot of um, expeditions that named like, you know, a couple of hundred of, of plants that re retain their scientific names. But unfortunately, there's only like one that is still named after her, despite being a key part of that expedition. Um, but that's, anyway, so there's a couple of books out um, about her her legacy, um, unfortunately, not probably didn't have the happiest of endings. But um, there was a new book that came out recently that I haven't read yet that may may have more evidence about what what happened to her after um, she was discovered on the ship and forcibly sent ashore. Um, yeah. yeah. Nice. That's my and what was her name one more time? Uh, Jean Barret. J e a n n e b a r e t. Jean Barret. Um, she was on the. Um, expedition with uh, Bougainvillea, or Bougainville, who's, uh, who the Bougainvillea plant was named after. Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot of um, scientific names with his name in it, and also Commerson, who is another naturalist on board. There's a lot of scientific names for plants that have his name in it too, but there's only one left um, with, with hers. Cool. Have you seen on, on my water bottle? There is a Loch Ness monster oh. sticker. Well, I'll have to have a talk with it. Then. Yeah, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> That's your chance. <laughs> um, science. Did you hear the from Tim in the data lab? Cool. Okay. Oh. That's cool. Okay, Gabby's got a cool one. Okay, go for it, Gabby. Um. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm Gabby. Uh, I'm on the ROV team. Uh, the real person I would like to meet is um, Remedios Faro, who's a surrealist painta painter from the early part of the 
uh, 1900s, um, and she's from Spain, and like she's just got a mind that produces images like I could never imagine, and I would just like love a moment to tap into that, see what it, see just what that's like. Um, yeah, her stuff's really beautiful, and she's painting surrealist work when, you know. Uh, the men in that field were the ones recognized for it. Um, yeah. So There's some really cool art. Yeah, her yeah. stuff's really beautiful. And it's sort of simultaneously cozy and eerie. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous. Um, Gonna have some weird dreams about these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Cool. Okay, that's me. All right, thanks, Gabby. Thanks, Gabby. Um, hi, my name is Karen. I'm an ROV pilot um, here on the Nautilus, um, visiting from the Monterey Bay Area Research Institute. Um, if there's a person that I would like to meet and have a conversation with, I think it'd be Isaac Asimov. He was a, a writer. Um, a lot of his his books, he wrote like more than 150 books, um, but uh, a lot of his stuff was like really inspired, and a, a lot of the stuff that he wrote went on to like really shape the way that we think about like robots and AI. And um, so yeah, it's pretty. His work was pretty game changing. Be That's interesting right. to know what he thinks now, or what he would think. All right, thank you, Karen. Okay. And then go ahead, Logan. Yeah, um, hi, I'm Logan Awesome Jack. I am the video engineering intern. Um, always sitting over here in the in the top right corner of darkness. Um, and <laughs> oh, someone <laughs> coming by her cam. That's very interesting. Logan. Oh, and there it goes. Oh, and goodbye. <laughs> Hello and goodbye. That was great. Um. Yeah, visiting from NOAA Fisheries, um, and I think I've had a lot of time to sit on this question as we go around, um, and I've kind of gone through a couple, but I honestly think that the person I'd really want to talk to is Jacques Cousteau, um, someone I definitely idolized, and then kind of did some research and wrote a paper and watched some watched his original films, um, and definitely a, a complicated history, so but then also kind of a, a storied legacy. So I think it'd be really, really interesting to hear his life from his perspective. Thank you, Logan. Yeah, so now you have met all of us here on the Ford 8 crew. You know a little bit more about us. And again, if you're just now tuning in, we are currently on our um, H1999 dive. So almost to 2000. We are still exploring the Johnston Atoll region. Actually the northwest edge of the Johnston Atoll region to be exact. And our expected maximum depth is going to be 2,500 meters with a bottom time of about 20 hours. So uh, how long do we have until we reach the bottom? Let's see. My guess is 45 minutes. It looks like an hour at oh. the current pace. All right, so an hour. A little bit more time to chit chat. What about fictional character you'd like to meet? Yeah, no. I, I, you can do fictional. Real or fictional, even the Loch Ness Monster would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing I came to mind. Yeah, why, why not? Uh, I also need to shout out my dad, who's also watching apparently. <laughs> Hi, Samantha's mom and dad. <laughs> Do you have a fictional character, Steve, that you would like to? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. I'll go uh, last. Steve. Go I'll last. go last. <laughs> All right, oh, yeah, we do have I've some. Got one. Okay, go for totally it. Yeah. I, the first thing that came to mind was I would really want to meet Gandalf. <laughs> Gandalf. <laughs> I think he would be, awesome. be rad. Nice. Good answer. Okay, Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll give you enough time to think. I said last. Oh. Oh, okay. So I'll, okay. Oh, um, yeah, I, I was mulling over a couple of different opportunities. Please. Okay. Um, so, fun fictional character to meet, Inigo Montoya. <laughs> oh, oh <yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's a great answer. <laughs> that, 
That's a great answer. <laughs> wow, Steve might have won that yeah, round. That was great. <laughs> Yeah. Inigo is definitely an intense person to meet, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I think we should be so alike. <laughs> Share some stories. <laughs> Are you going to tell them about corals? Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what Inigo Montoya would Hello. think about corals. Hello. This is a fictional character. Come on, let's not be uh, <laughs> too realistic here. <laughs> You can make a pizza at your uh, pizza shop. <laughs> yeah, uh, gr grilled cheese shop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> pizza and grilled cheese shop. He would understand grilled cheese. <laughs> Little fish and satellite tip. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so my favorite book is 100 Years of Solitude. Oh, wow. sounds. And... I've always had an affinity for Colonel, Colonel Aureliano Buendia. Uh. I just want to sit with him and make some fish, <laughs> some little <laughs> tiny golden fish all day. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would have to think about that some more, but that's what first popped in my head when he said fictional. So. Interesting. Yeah. I loved Love in the Time of Cholera. Yeah, that was the that first book too. I read after college when I like couldn't read anymore. I was like, I never want to read again. And then that was the one that like broke the spell for me. Right? Broke the curse. Have you read um, Strange Pilgrims? No. Not, no. Yeah, the mind of Marquez is uh, <laughs> it's pretty pretty amazing. So anyway, that's my fictional character I'd like to meet. I mean, technically, it's magical realism. So uh, it's yeah. So oh. half <laughs> fictional? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So still still completely fictional. <laughs> I mean, yes, but. <laughs> All right, we, we do have some questions. So inter, intermission on the uh, fictional characters. And then let's see here. Da, da, da. All right, so how old can a fossil in the ocean last? Depends on its composition, I suppose. Yeah. What, what, yeah, what the mineral is it originated. I think a lot of it has to do with oxygen concentration. Um, you need to have an anoxic environment. Um, so I saw this question and I did a little research for it. Um, so the Burgess Shale is a unit, a uh, ge geologic unit that is over 500 million years old. Uh, it record some of the earliest fossil beds uh, with soft parts. Uh, so basically, as long as you can have a uh, quick burial and um, compaction within a rock, that fossil will remain as long as the rock remains. I thought that was a really, really interesting question. So, so was it was it an uh, during its uh, formation? Yeah, so uh, shale is um, formed through very low um, energy water uh, environments so like lagoons um, areas like again where you don't have a lot of um, uh, current basically um, and and rapid burial of, of sand and clay deposits mostly smaller clay and silt sized uh, so in these environments are where uh, coastal um, margins as well uh, where you might have low energy tides and currents which can lead to uh, deposition of fossils and once they're imprinted in the in the rock themselves then the cast is all that remains right there's nothing organic left it's just a cast of a rock and actually I have some really nice fossilized wood at home which looks just like wood uh, but it is it's a rock it's just a cast of a, of a, of a tree or a branch so yeah it's a good question cool good answer that remind. I just had a random flashback. I haven't had this memory in years, but I remember. I think I was like in third grade. We went to some center where we were learning about fossils, and I remember the guide there showed us all fossilized poop, and it just like blew our mind. We were like, "What?" Uh, those are called corpolites. Corpolites. I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. she told me that so at the at the time, but all I remember is it being called fossilized poop, and it yeah. just it's a core memory for me apparently. <laughs> Explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Awesome.
fossilized poop. Everybody loves corpolites. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that? That was somewhere in SoCal. It was a. Was it was a. Um, the tar pits. Where no, it wasn't there? the tar pits. I really wish I could remember exactly where that was. Huh. I wouldn't be surprised if they did have fossilized. Yeah. Now you know why they call them the tar pits. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> No, anyway. there's a lot of dinosaur skeletons there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to stay on topic. Um, what is CTD found in the HERC data? Yeah, so I looked that up, and it stands for conductivity, and that's all I've got. So what does conductivity mean when we're looking at Hercules' data? Conductivity is, a, is basically um, it's a voltage uh, difference that is usually focuses on the salinity mm -hmm. metric rather than measuring salinity as an absolute unit in terms of salt content it measures the uh, conductivity of the water as an electro electrolytic solution and it calculates using different variables what the salinity should be uh, and fun fact salinity is unitless when it's calculated this way good to know But normally, if you're looking at absolute salinity, it would be parts per thousand. Yeah. Okay. So if you're to, to evaporate a mass of seawater and then you know, weigh the salinity, uh, the salt content that precipitates out. Another very observant question. So somebody is asking, why does everyone in the front row have glasses and no one in the back row has them? Which I'll have you know, Bronwyn is wearing glasses. <laughs> Actually, I think there's a decent, at least on my part, there's a decent reason for that. Like I used to wear contacts up here, but uh, like staring at the screens, like sometimes I don't want to be blinking all the time trying to clear <laughs> my contacts and my hands are busy. I can't like adjust them or anything like that. And I found I see better if I just wear glasses and they're less fussy. When I'm, when I'm in the van. Yeah. Hmm. Otherwise, I just wear my contacts. I wear them all the time when I'm not when I'm not working in the van. Yeah, these are not special ROV uh, driving glasses. <laughs> 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 these team are my special I mean, ROV driving glasses. Only. This is team glasses. Team glasses. Team glasses. Uh, and Logan's there in that dark right uh, corner. Oh yeah, it's fun. <laughs> 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 it's Do you wear I'm glasses, hiding. Logan? Um, I wear contacts at night. Which is really interesting. Yeah. I would bring my glasses, but I forgot to bring them on this trip. Um, if my parents are listening, uh, don't worry about that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I I wear <laughs> I wear contacts at night that like shape my eye um, to have good vision when I wake up. <laughs> yeah, I also didn't bring my glasses. I don't need need them, but they would definitely be helpful. That's, where, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't wear yeah. them, but I have them. Yeah, I should have brought them. Oh, well. Just just a little experiment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I put on my sunglasses, which are not prescriptions, <laughs> I can only see every other monitor back here. <laughs> and you look really cool. You look very cool, sure. Steve. Yeah. Yep. I must say. <laughs> smug Steve Cam. Smug Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Extra smug. <laughs> Extra smug Steve Cam. Oh. <laughs> Super smug. Extra smug. Uh, Excellent. I don't, don't want to let it go, but the, the, the T and the D in CTD are temperature and depth, which kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, great. Steve, back. I hadn't taken a careful enough look. I thought I was going to have to say, like, hey, what are the odds you will wear them on one of these? But yep. you're already wearing it's them. It's happening. It's wonderful. Yeah, I have uh, <laughs> very strange the polarization in these... Uh, <laughs> It really not is. Not compatible with uh, screens back here. But it lends you a certain gravitas. <laughs> True. <laughs> if there's nothing, I need gravitas, yeah. <laughs> no more gravitas. Too much gravitas. Uh, I have more on the CTD. Um, from those measurements, you can calculate a sound speed profile, um, which is important when you're doing sonar work. Sure is. That reminds me. Yes. Oh, that, <laughs> that has reminded up. the navigator. <laughs> Got a load of sound seed profile. Sweet. Ooh. Now she's going to load a sound speed profile. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right, this is an interesting question, Steve. Um, so coral gardeners, or people who are trying to outplant coral and restore coral and things like that, uh, how do you foresee that happening or the success of that um, process if ocean temperatures are rising? Um, do you maybe foresee that corals can eventually adapt to the rising temperature? It's a good question. It's not something I have a lot of experience with. I think um, you know the shallow water coral world is very different from the deep water coral world, um, even though we study the same group taxonomically. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's important to mention that uh, a lot of the corals that are in these grow experiments that are for uh, resettlement or replanting, um, you know, it, there's been a lot of work done both to understand them on a genetic level and a, a transcriptomic level. You know, basically what what their stress capabilities and and uh, um, abilities to adapt to those extremes are. So I would presume that they're probably the best suited for the time uh, that we have now, uh, yeah. um, but it's it's unclear if, if their uh, you know, suitability or fitness would change over time. Uh, we know we we live in a world where the atmosphere and and uh, seawater chemistry is constantly changing, and so uh, if these organisms are adapted to you know, the end century um, climate scenarios, uh, they might be more suitable more fit than um, than those that are present in the environment today. But my understanding was that um, there was actually some pretty severe bleaching in some of the grow out, um, grow out uh, gardens that were, um, I guess, planted or not, maybe not planted, but uh, established in the Florida Keys during this most recent uh, bleaching event this past summer where temperatures reached quite high levels. Um, so not sure how how they will even recover, but it'll be really important to understand that uh, that that relationship um, scientifically before they're actually established on the reef. Yeah, absolutely. You also have to consider the environment you're transplanting things into. Um, a lot of coral reefs, especially in the Florida Keys, are very macroalgae dominated, and uh, there are really um, important biological and ecological feedbacks that have to be taken into account before you throw uh, corals into an environment particularly dominated by macroalgae, which uh, can be really harmful to corals. Um, you know, there's a lot of chemical warfare that goes on in reefs between macroalgae and corals and uh, you know, uh, uh, herbivorous um, uh, al algae eating invertebrates and fishes. Um, so they're very complex dynamics, and it's uh, it's really important to understand all those aspects before you start um, anticipating you can replant and regrow an entire coral reef. Yeah, absolutely. Did I enter our time already? And the fact that they're so slow growing, and I I wonder if the um, temperature is rising, if it's just happening at a rate that is too quick for the coral to adapt to like if it was a more gradual increase maybe it would give them a chance to kind of go along with that uh, gradual increase but I think it's just kind of spiking in a, at a rate where they're not able to keep up so yeah very very good question yeah some of our viewers are noticing that the live data bar on the website is down for now. Hopefully we can get that fixed soon. Um, I'll try my best to stay on top of updating you of the depth and the temperature. Um, but I know that it's uh, kind of fun to be able to see it um, on your own screens at home. So thanks for the heads up. We're working on it on this end and hopefully we can get that back up soon. Okay, and it is just about five o'clock here. Um, where we're diving, so that means it's dinner time. So we are doing a little swap here for about 30 minutes or so while we go down and eat some food. So you might be hearing some different voices and seeing some different faces here for just a few minutes. Well, the glasses ratio is going to change up in the front row. The glasses ratio. <laughs> no, not that. I'll have so to uh, go glasses back on so we can keep the... <laughs> 
<laughs> levels consistent. For science. For science. <laughs> I actually really like it. It makes the van even darker. It's nice. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so back to the my my petrified poop story. I forgot what it was called already. Corporalite. <laughs> Corporalite. I'm just going to... Corporate. Um No, that wasn't at the. It was not at the um, at the Natural History Museum in LA. Um, it was like an outdoor center, and they had the corpolite, and they had like a really, really impressive fossilized tree stump. I'm gonna have to Google. I hope that place is still around because it'd be cool to visit it again now as an adult instead of a third grader. Um, but yeah. Was it the Natural History Museum in L.A.? I, feel, I mean, I always remember the, the first Natural History Museum I went to as a kid. I'm, I don't know if that influenced everyone, anyone else's uh, career trajectory, but I was always fascinated, um, you know, with field trips, I think elementary school yeah. or some of the early ones. But my hometown, you know, closest Natural History Museum to me was the Yale Peabody Museum, which I really loved going to. Um, and uh, they're going through a big re renovation right now. I can't wait to go back and visit when they reopen. Yeah, love museums. So like I said, I work at the California Science Center and actually our next door neighbor is a natural history museum. And I worked there too for a year. <laughs> um, really, really, really cool place to work. Yeah. All right, it is time for me to get going. It's dinner. I'll be back in a few minutes and yeah, I'm getting notifications that um, if you go to our nautiluslive.org website, the front page, and you go to the sidebar where it says uh, technology information, something like that, scroll down where it says more data, click on that, and then it takes you to a page where you can be able to see more specs about HERC and the depth and temperature and conductivity and all of that stuff. All right, um, I'll be back in a few minutes. And next up, uh, replacing me is Ashley. <laughs> I want to go grab mine. Hello everyone, this is Ashley Glickley, Science Communication Fellow. I'm just taking over for Brittany for a little bit. The chat is open if you have any questions for us or anything you'd like to share. We have a really good question here in the chat uh, for Nick. Nick, how has what you've seen so far on this expedition correlate with your current research? Yeah, so uh, my research is center, centers around um, reconstructing uh, the McDonald hotspot, which is in the South Pacific. 
uh, Cook Ostral Islands, and I'm trying to see if uh, we can retrace the hotspot track through Swains Island and the Tokelau Islands up through Howland and Baker Islands. Uh, and in that area, you have multiple hotspot chains that over are overlapping each other, uh, similar to what we see in this region as well. Uh, so, uh, though it's not the same hotspot track we're looking at, uh, the sampling techniques are exactly the same. Uh, so this gives me a chance to um, to do sampling uh, on you know samples that will be processed in the future. Uh, whereas the samples I use in my research were collected on previous Nautilus and other dives. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And I have learned a lot from Nick on this expedition, just getting to see the different rocks that we've sampled. Everybody loves the rocks once they get to look at them. I know. And the ones that I think are so awesome might not be necessarily They're the best awesome. samples. <laughs> They're all awesome. We love the rocks. Yep. All right. I'll be back. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good dinner. Thanks. Is anybody up for a would you rather question? What's up, guys? <laughs> Let's do it. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I haven't done this yet. It's usually Leela on dinner relief. Uh oh. Mixing it up a little bit. Yeah. Would you rather? All right, would you Dwight rather? Or Leela. <laughs> 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 would you rather cover dinner or would you rather swim in a pool full of Nutella or full of maple syrup? <laughs> maple syrup. <laughs> and why? Less viscous, I feel. Hmm. Perhaps. Wait, wait, wait. Ugh. <laughs> Just uh to both of those. Anyone else has a... No. Do I... <laughs> <laughs> no, look. I think we all know the Canadian's answer. <laughs> oh, I thought it was... <laughs> I miss... I just got onto SPL. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. We it's have, better that way. We have just... <laughs> We've just decided that you're going to swim at full of, in a pool full of maple syrup rather than Nutella. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> the only options are Nutella or syrup? Well, I mean, we could make as many options as we want. Jello? Is it, oh. is it real maple syrup or is it like... Yeah, no Aunt Jemima syrup. stuff. Excellent, yeah, <laughs> excellent question. <laughs> yes, we could make it legit maple syrup right, and yep. legit I'll Nutella too. Syrup. Which one would be better for your skin afterwards? Oh, good question. Probably the Nutella because it's got some hazelnut oils in it. I just Probably can't even imagine trying to swim skin in Nutella. Soft. It's like, how do you even move around in that? With your mouth, I guess. You just eat <laughs> it just off. Eat it. <laughs> just eat it. Eat yourself <laughs> forward. I don't know how that works. but I, I feel like you could... <laughs> it's like quicksand almost. You would kind of sink down. And how how deep is the pool? That's like an important question. Let's say baby pool. <laughs> okay. Get a little kitty pool. What about peanut butter? Are we swimming in peanut butter? Uh, I don't know. No. No. All right. <laughs> None of this is happening. None of this is happening. Was that from uh, one of our commenters who sent that in, or is no? This? Oh. Just you know, starting to. Create conversation. Love it. You know, just those blue water things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to, uh, you know, congratulate them for their, their creativity if it was a comment box. Well, the chat is telling us chocolate pudding would be also another good option. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> 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 There's two different reactions to that. Ooh. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's been asked before, but how long do you tend to dive? And if, for example you have something of interest to extend the dive for research? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, we try to like stick to the plan as best we can because it, um, you know, it helps with our sort of longer range planning. So we try not to extend the dive unless it's kind of amazing and we're way behind schedule. Um, I think more often this trip we've been ending a little early rather than a little late a few times. Um, but if what we see and want to explore is uh, warrants the extended time, we just need to communicate that to everybody so that folks that are adjusting their sleep schedules and work schedules, you know, know in advance. 
And the dive we're on right now is set for 20 hours? Correct. With a max depth of 2,500 meters. So Dwight, what do you think about this dive in particular? How is it different than some of yeah. the other ones we've done? Oh, it's with? cool. It's, um, so we're on the flank of Johnston Atoll now, so it's not just an isolated seamount. It's a, a very large uh, feature. It's the uh, island of Johnston Atoll. And uh, we're on a ridge that protrudes off the north flank of this feature, so it's uh, quite large and um, sort of continuous and represents a larger volume of volcanic material that formed the original seamount. So we're probably looking at um, eruptions that occurred on underwater and uh, sort of secondary to the primary eruptions on the summit. So it, geologically it could be interesting because it will look at s some sort of different types of lava potentially. Um, Biologically, I think it'll be interesting because it's a it's a it's a ridge feature that juts up into the current, and uh, you know, hopefully, that's uh, conducive for lots of corals and sponges and good stuff like that. And we're all holding our breath for Salumba Lula, <laughs> hoping. Mm-hmm. You sure? I'm just trying to get in that sweet spot. So I just found out something incredibly interesting. Mm. So that phrase starboard larboard that um, it's a, you know, kind of a, a ship ongoing band group, I guess. <laughs> larboard actually used to mean the port side of the, the ship or oh. lad board, I guess. I thought that was just a totally like silly, Somebody just silly made it a name. Rhyme. <laughs> no, it's for, it's yeah, like we were talking about this downstairs, and Stephanie clarified. So, because I had a dream last night that I was like throwing around the term starboard larboard in a joking way, and then I was informed that I should be like taking it seriously or something <laughs> like that. And then you woke up to the reality. And I woke there. up, and then <laughs> Steph told me that I was like, "You're joking." <laughs> so larboard, and we were joking around about if somebody yelled for you to get to the larboard side, but it was too far away, you'd be in big trouble. So I think <laughs> port is better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... I thought it was like starboard schmarboard. <laughs> That's what yeah. they were talking about. I love how the dives are invading our dreams as well, right? I oh, yeah. 100%. I've been on, on watch. watch. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I think they're nightmares at that point. Aww. No, definitely not. <laughs> well, Depends what happens in the dive. My, in my Does dream, the motor die? In my dream, I was actually on land getting back on the boat, so. Was it philosophical? Does the motor <laughs> die? <laughs> <laughs> no, mine are just blue water. I dreamt that I've been processing samples as well. Yeah, yeah. How did the samples go last night? Uh, they were great. So yeah. we got that tuna kit up. Um, and so that was really cool to actually see up close and personal. It had a very interesting texture. It was like kind of hard. Mm. Um, almost like synthetic feeling on the outside like a mold like a what like a uh, to me it looked like a uh, like a like a mold of some sort a mold a mold, a yeah. mold. Yeah, like like a mold of something a cast oh, okay not a like cast a fungus mold, mold. Okay. Not a, no oh. I, don't know. <laughs> I, don't know I forgot that yeah, yeah. Jello mold. <laughs> y'all y'all like like biology so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do but yeah weird texture on the outside it looks like that kind of white circular mass that was in it appears to be potentially egg sacs so oh, oh. interesting um the one we thought like we thought for a second we said sponge well but we knew it wasn't I, a sponge we knew we it wasn't a guessing. sponge we just yeah. said it looked kind of similar to that we were just talking about kind of its appearance more than what we actually thought it was but that and then the polychaetes were quite large too the worm associates i thought that i was wondering if like the the transparency of the tunicate was making the polychaetes look bigger but no, they were yeah, they were actually real really size. Yeah, yeah, so we I think we guessed it was about 50 centimeters in length, and that uh, that ended up being the case. It didn't really change much in shape on the way up. It was totally intact, and 
kudos again on the collection by our fine pilots and uh, uh, y'all did an awesome manipulator job. operators. You're welcome. <laughs> what else did we find, Hayuso? Did we get anything else that was of note last night? Rocks. We got a lot of sponges. There is few squat lobsters as well. There is a beautiful colony of black coral that I'm going to be working today to try to ID and get some more fine um, identification like uh, the spine. So probably I'm going to, to process a little bit parts of the colony, put a little bit of uh, bleach and then checking under the microscope and see if it will match with something so yeah so i think that is the black coral the squat lobsters that was we got, really yeah we got an, a whole sponge colony i think turned out to be semperella that'll be sent off to the hawaii institute of marine biology um we got well, the sponge we scooped with the nodules yeah we got some nice looking nodules got some cool rocks yeah. yeah. So one and looked like it was like 80 million years old or something wow. when we cut it open. Wow. That's crazy. Um, and then we also got some cool associates with one of the sponges. There was that small snail. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. then um, yeah. I think some amphipods. So we did a good job. We did a great job. Awesome. And uh, primenoid as well. That was uh, so beautiful. Idea. Absolutely beautiful. And it was really nice of the few of the organisms we got because mm -hmm. this is predominantly hard substrate. So I'm very intrigued and I'm curious to see how they attach, what's the type of uh, structure. So we got a few, including the tunicate. We really can see, we're going to study further after uh, how is the attachment structure how they use that, so that that would be really valuable as well to yeah. have the whole picture of the the biology of the species. Awesome. I know we probably don't know yet, but do we think that that tunicate is um, undescribed, yeah. or were you all able to find one that was similar? Well, I don't think so, so far, we 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 are discussing this a little bit before that we are going to contact uh, the expertise. So that's very important. We contact who is working with the group, like yeah. the taxonomist the expertise. So we, we have a list of uh, places we are going to reach out and see if any of them. I'm just now checking some. Yeah, I see you got your about. research pulled up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is few that could look similar, but uh, w we never know, you know, like there is, I think so far what I found is uh, a work from the 90s uh, in Antarctica, but then you'll be completely different type of environment that we have here. And uh, when they did this survey there in the 90s, uh, from the species they found, they found 10 new species. Wow. wow. Where was that uh, survey in the 90s? In, in the Antarctica. Oh, and was it oh. deep habitat there or? A deep habitat, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. There is no much material available, and, and it's amazing that these crews, you know, with the depth we are diving and with the structure we have, we are able to have the chance to look for all the, these other uh, taxons that uh, taxa that usually we ha we don't have the chance. So it's incredible, valuable sample for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. definitely. Really unique, something we haven't seen. Very exciting. Hardly at all. It is, yeah. All right, so we have a kind of more fun, silly-ish question in the chat. So we were talking about would you rather. So would you rather eat pizza with or without pineapple? With. With, oh. obviously. <laughs> Clearly with. With. I'm without. So Dwight says no pineapple. Oh, my uh, I'll partake. Well, it depends on what else is on it. But <laughs> is it uh, just pineapple or can we have some cheese? And if it's just pineapple, no. <laughs> what do you mean no cheese? You gotta have cheese. By definition, well, it's not a pizza otherwise. Sure, you can have pizza without cheese. You can have a vegan what? pizza. No cheese. Sure you can. Yes. Yeah. How do lactose intolerant people eat pizza? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to exclude you guys, but I'm not lactose intolerant. I, I love really my cheese. Love my cheese. <laughs> <laughs> we had pizza for lunch actually, and it was delicious, but no pineapple. Boo. Yeah. I'll partake. Yeah. Yeah, I, like yeah. I don't go crazy with my pizzas. I usually just keep it simple, like pepperoni, and then if I feel like putting stuff on, it'd be like pineapple or yeah, spinach or dried tomatoes. Pepperoni all the way. Spinach. Yeah, because when oh like God. cooked, not just like raw. <laughs> well, you, you you cook it and then put it on. You let it cook while it's baking. Uh, while it's baking, and then the last like two minutes or whatever, you throw it in, so it just 
Right. Smokes it off. That sounds terrible. It's not. All right. Uh, I'll believe you. Yeah. I'm all about pizza, man. My house, we use pizza to get the veggies into Eat. the mouths. Of yeah. The feed the veggies. Into the mouths of babies. We put broccoli. We've done butternut squash. We've put beets on pizza. Oh my God. Yeah. My Italian family is rolling around in their graves <laughs> right now. <laughs> And you guys have all these fresh produce because yeah, you're so on a farm, too, Yeah, right? we have yeah, fresh down. veggies, so. We'll just no, throw them on good. pizza. You're good. You're good, man. Let me we'll guess, that's down. not really a pizza then, huh? Yeah. No, nope. as I just feel it's like cheese well, is so. a bare minimum for a pizza. <laughs> not like those Rhode Island party pizzas, okay. which have just tomato sauce. I think somebody that's, uh, pulled one over uh, us for that. Pizza, that's yeah. gross. People love it. I know. I don't <laughs> understand. I didn't grow up with it, so I can't. A lot of sauce going on. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm making my stand. I'm going to die on the hill. I don't like them. I would say the chat is with the no pineapple. M many people, are <laughs> maybe it's just the people who don't like pineapple are really motivated. It's that same I'm guy sorry, who I'm wrote sorry in. about your wrong just, opinions. <laughs> yeah, you're all wrong. <laughs> I'm going to ask the question because only I know is the answer. Is it really Hawaiian? Was it like started in Hawaii or do they just call it Hawaiian pizza? Good question. I think it's who started the the fad of putting pineapple on our pizza. I don't know, but I've been cooking a lot with pineapple this summer. I'll eat it with salmon and with, um, so good. Yeah. like, you know, kind of Polynesian, Asian-inspired dishes that I've been making. The only excuse is if you're allergic to it. For pineapple? Yeah. To take it off the pizza, you're saying? Yeah. Mm. In the traditions of Italy, the pineapple on the pizza. <laughs> That's true. I wonder how our Italian friends are feeling about this. What's your favorite kind of cheese? Now that we're on the cheese topic. <laughs> oh, Parmesan. Feta. Parmesan. I gotta go brie. Mm. Mm. Brie with apple. Brie is like slow <laughs> milk. It's not really cheese. Ah. Do you think we're the it's only delicious. watch that talks about food? <laughs> no, <laughs> everybody, every, I've heard every single watch talks this much about food, uh -oh. if not more. Okay. Oh, Panos has an answer for us. Um, Panos, I think your phone went out, so I can't see it now. I, I think it's saying that it was Greek. Pizza? So someone that was Greek a decided... A Greek immigrant who a moved Greek to immigrant. Canada. Oh, there you go. A Greek immigrant <laughs> who moved to Canada put Whatever. pineapple on the pizza. All the cool people moving to Canada these days. It says Hawaiian pizza comes from Canada. I think Toronto. It was 1954. Ooh. They sure are, James. They sure are. <laughs> yes, Gabby. You're one of the cool ones we allowed in. Got two Canadians in the How's room. How's that Canada, uh, Canadian test going, Gabby? Um, Alana Miles is Canadian. Who? <laughs> who? <laughs> I'm getting more obscure. Uh, you know the song Black Velvet? Uh. By who? <laughs> Alana Miles. you got to sing it. We don't know that one. Oh. There's I a lot of people that are Canadian and people don't know they're Canadian. <laughs> Mike Myers is Canadian. Oh, Mike Myers, Myers I do Canadian. love, I do love my Wayne's world. Who? Michael Bublé. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard him referred to as anything other than the boobs. Oh, interesting. <laughs> mm, that's fair. Um, he grew up like 10 minutes from my house. Oh, no way. Yeah. It's very Canadian. Coquitlam's the next, he grew up in Burnaby. Uh, okay. Coquitlam's the next uh, no county, I guess, like American equivalent county over, <laughs> municipality. There you go. Um, yeah, no, so in answer to your question, it's going well. I think I'm going to pass. Nice. Is it really that hard? It's like, do you want to live here? <laughs> yes, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Canada. No, my joke is the <laughs> citizenship test will be, I have to do the thing that all Canadians do, where they, um, where like somebody lists off a bunch of artists or actors or whatever, and you're like, did Canadian, you know so-and-so is Canadian? Canadian? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Totally. That and ice skating without boards. Oh, this is why. Ice skating without boards, yes, on lakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really That's hard. That's not something I've actually done. Really? Yeah. If we don't we don't get snow in Vancouver. Yeah, okay. so it's Canada, but it's like Seattle. We get Yeah, yeah. I've done it in uh, Calgary. Yep, very cold in Calgary. Yeah. So Calgary's cold. a fun place. It'll be the middle of summer, it'll be thirty degrees, and then a Chinook will come through and it'll be minus two and snowing. <laughs> and then half an hour later it'll be thirty degrees again. I'm a big Calgary fan. I like Calgary. I like to go through Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay.
Um, can you put some ahead on? All this food talk's making me hungry. Well, mm. you're in luck. I know. Not like when we get up at four in the morning and we're <laughs> scrounging around. And you don't have any Z-Bias on anymore. That's snack squat. Snack, Just uh, snack start squat dialing down. Give yourself negative, I don't know, start with negative 90 or something. Oh, well, it's already almost 1,800 mm -hmm. meters. I'll slow down. Keep a constant ahead on. Oh, yeah, you're stick locked. Got it. You won't be able to change your head when you're stick locked. But you shouldn't worry about heading when we're headed down because when you have tension on, it'll pull the vehicle to whatever heading makes the most sense. Okay, I'm essentially all stop until you get back down below. Give yourself more horizontal than that. A little bit. Just a touch more while it's all loopy like that. What's up? Nothing. <laughs> I haven't really been paying too close attention. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, so our viewers online are noticing we're switching back over. Um, I'm back from dinner. Somebody's asking what was dinner. We must know. Um, my favorite part of dinner was the ravioli. They had really, really good mushroom ravioli today. <laughs> Twice out of here. <laughs> um, burgers, what else? Beets, uh, french fries, some sort of. Carrot salad? Yeah, carrot salad. All right. All kinds of stuff. Um, all right. So Ashley was taking over for me while I was gone, and I'm not quite sure where she left off. Looks like there was a conversation about pizza. I am pro pineapple, by the way. I'm team pineapple. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so this chat is live. If you are messaging us and commenting, uh, that does go into a live chat stream that uh, we're able to see on our side. We try our very best to get to the questions and comments as they come in. Um, and if you would like to see live data about where Hercules, our main ROV, is currently diving, you can go to the nautiluslive.org website, the main page. And on my screen, it's showing um, <laughs> it's showing a technology section on the right-hand side, and at the bottom of that, there's a section where it says more data. Click on that, and it can give you more data. Wow, back row is looking pretty cool <laughs> right now. There's a lot of gravitas happening. <laughs> they really do look incredible. <laughs> They look amazing. I don't know if they can see anything I totally anything see what Steve is talking about, though. It's like every other blue. screen is dark. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> oh, yeah, you look unreal. <laughs> kind of have to go diagonal to We're joining the Steve in the coral matrix. <laughs> Steve in the coral matrix. We're going to finally be able to see everything he sees. <laughs> the coral matrix. Just show us the I, way. I love that. Can you make one of those PTZ cams? Like, just look at that whole row. <laughs> I've tried. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's on it. Yeah. Yes, keep I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the good zoom. 
Yeah. You felt left out with the glasses thing. So. <laughs> it was just iconic. You look amazing. <laughs> iconic, oh. Well. Why, thank you. Uh, I can get a you. quick, uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> we have some yeah. Yeah. Get in there, Brittany. Oh, <laughs> Wait, Bronwyn has to be in there, too. Yeah. Come on, Bronwyn. Bronwyn, come Bronwyn. Over. get in there. <laughs> Lovely. A little boring. <laughs> We're cool too. Oh, perfection. <laughs> what Science is cool, guys. It's like the nerds Doesn't the that camera now. up there like zoom, pan, and tilt and zoom around? It does. It's not connecting right now, but it does. So, give me a sec. For this critical. Uh, I, know, I think I this, know, this is this an incredibly, is really incredibly important, important moment. <laughs> Somebody in the chat is accusing us of not really eating dinner. We just went to go get our glasses. <laughs> <laughs> no, not don't wrong. worry. We did Honestly? Both. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, the commenter from Chicago, you changed the way we're doing science in, the, in this van. That's amazing. You have influence. Yeah, something really weird of the polarization of these classes mm -hmm. in one in one uh, wavelength. I can see half the monitors, and the other wavelength I can see there. You have the to monitors. go like a good 45 degrees, maybe. Yeah, do a little tilt. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is a wavelength. You can you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> po polarization filters different wavelengths, yeah. right? I told Rob that my sunglasses were polarized. He didn't believe me. He had to test them out himself. <laughs> he just wanted to wear your glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Really cool. yeah. They're good glasses, just Brittany. Cool. They are. They're really good yeah. at yeah. too. Oh. Really so nice. You're like driving Thank the matrix. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. Stop. Don't stop. Stop. <laughs> These glasses are really doing something in the background. I don't know. Zoom in. <laughs> Stop that. Maybe just flip my hair a little bit. Stop with the zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right, get my good side. Oh <laughs> uh, this is fun. <laughs> Blue water. Blue water. Blue yeah. water. What did they put Blue in this water? water. Oh, do we, are we about to harmonize? <laughs> <laughs> what is coming yeah. on? All right, so I have a game I want to play. Oh, I'm ready. Some of you may or may not know this game. If you already know how this game works, it would be a lot more fun if you kept it to yourself. All right, ready? Rock. So. Wait, we're not playing rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> <laughs> it's not rock. You but will. I will tell you this. All right, so I'm going to an island, a deserted island and I can only bring certain things with me. So when I go to the island, I'm going to bring a pebble, but not a rock. Oh. Uh, Nick, what are you gonna bring? Desalination plant. <laughs> <laughs> Nick like will make it on this island. I'd like to be in that camp. <laughs> but not what? Wait, what? Oh, but not, uh, I don't know, a baseball. I don't know. I don't understand the game. I don't understand. Uh, you, the nobody game. understands the game yet. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, you can't come. On, you can't come on my island. All sorry. Right. Oh. I am rejected. All right. All right. Who else wants to try to make it on my island with me? God, I've played this game, but it's been so long. I have to remember. And I think you can make up different rules every time. So. What? Oh. I have no idea what's happening. So again, I'm bringing a pebble, but I'm not bringing a rock. What type of pebble? <laughs> no. Tell me more about um, this pebble. I'll bring, I'm going to bring a shovel, but not a hoe. You actually can't come on my island. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. Uh, can I bring a sword, but not a spear? Nope. <laughs> Hammock, but not a tank. All right, there are questions coming in. I need to, I need to address these. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, put some horizontal on. Just a little bit. Yes, we look very cool. Thank you, everybody in the chat. <laughs> there you go. 
This is doing wonders for our egos. Um, where are we diving now? So we are descending to Sorry, I'll slow down. our next dive site. Um, the maximum depth is going to be 2,500 meters. We should be getting there in the next, I'm guessing, 20 minutes. That's a good guess. All right, not 20 minutes. Um, what have we seen so far? We've seen um, less. Let's see. Why did it slow we've way down? We've seen blue water. I don't know if we've seen anything uh, yet in the blue water. Zero lateral. Was notable. Just a touch of horizontal. Some siphonophores. Uh, a few fishes very early on. We saw um, that mystery yeah. density so change in the water. Vid off now. One sec. Yeah. All right. No Madison. Vid off calm, that's what I meant to say, okay. sorry. <laughs> Madison, you cannot come to my island with your orange juice. Uh. <laughs> or your horse. Our current depth right now is 2,006 meters. So again, our target depth is 2,500 meters. Um, there's somebody in the chat who wants to bring a puzzle, not a Red Bull. So guess what, chat person? You can actually bring both to my island. Come on over. OK, I want to bring some rubble, but not a garbage can. Gabby's cheating. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm Gabby, not cheating. I'm you, just can, you can come to my island with your rubble. I was just yeah. writing down the words that were allowed. Uh -huh. Not your garbage can, though. Can't do it. <laughs> Thanks. Wait. I'm going to the island. Wait, so Gabby was allowed with both items? Gabby no. Can one item? No, just with, just with her rubble. That's it. No garbage can. OK. Just the rubble. You were out, You were allowed rubble? Yeah. OK, OK. So I have a pebble. Gabby, Gabby has some rubble. What did chat person have? Can I bring Puzzle uh, wait, the Red Bull. Puzzle can the I Red Bull. can I please bring um, a bubble but not a stick? Yeah, you can bring Lovely. your bubble. Can I bring stick. a banana but not a rack of bananas? You can bring a banana and you can bring a rack of bananas. Sweet. Yeah. Bring on bring those bananas. We need our potassium. Oh, I don't know what it is then. Yeah, same. Can I bring right. a so close. Yeah. Dog, but not a cat? No. Can yeah. I bring a cooler <laughs> and I don't know what it is either now. <laughs> what was that, Samantha? Can I bring a cooler and a chiller? You can bring a cooler and a chiller, yes. Cool, thanks. I'm going to have a party on this island. Great. While we think some more, um, <laughs> we do have some <laughs> questions. While we think some more, also, um, this is your moment. To shine. To okay, shine. let's see it. <laughs> Slowly, dramatically, we shall zoom. <laughs> now I know how it feels like when Steve gets highlighted. Snark cam. Snark Steve cam. This, the snarky Steve cam. Snarky what Steve. is this cam called? I'm not snarky. Van cam one. <laughs> uh, shades cam, actually. Um, shades cam. The shady horizontal. science cam. I like that. It tends also, to drift uh, underneath the Atalanta if you don't have a little bit. It doesn't have to be very much. It can be just a touch. No, Maddie, you still can't come to my island with your <laughs> basket star and your sea star. <laughs> Sorry. Still can't Maddie come to the island. All right, what's the coolest thing we've all seen? Um, us? Just kidding. <laughs> Broadway, um, horizontal, you, uh, like 10% yeah. or something. Lean in on the zoom real quick. <laughs> yeah, horizontal. Sorry, yeah. Incredible. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the coolest Lovely. thing we've seen so far, in my opinion, would be the Dumbo octopus. Yeah. Um, so that was, yeah. that was, I think, last week, probably like the beginning of last week. We saw three <coughs> different kinds of Dumbo octopus in one dive. Um, the biggest one we saw was just under three feet, I think. And it was amazing. Uh, Nick reminds me that I was kind of losing my mind a little bit when we yeah. saw it. <laughs> but in a good way. In a good way. Yeah. I mean, what else was I supposed to do? Uh, so definitely that was my highlight. I don't know if anyone else disagrees with that. No, I, I agree. I'm a Dumbo. 
Yeah. Octopus. 100%. I quite right. enjoyed the mysterious uh, gelatinous organism. Yeah, that was cool too. The first one or the sequel? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> always the first one. Sequels yeah. rarely live up to the hype. I agree. What will we be the most excited to see when we get to the bottom? Excellent question. The seafloor. The seafloor. Yeah, so this area is largely unexplored. I don't know if um, the seamount has ever been explored before at all. Um, so it's a bit of a difficult question. I, I mean, so in some ways, this seamount may be attached to Johnston Atoll proper, but it may actually have different geological or origins. Mm -hmm. um, so our dive here is meant to investigate and sample to help determine if that's true or not. Um, but it, during that same period of time, we'll be sampling and looking for you know, biological similarities as well between the atoll and this area. We're only about uh, well, maybe 20 miles off the atoll now. Not very far. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to suggest that perhaps we can put out high pack or um, MB proc or yeah MB proc out. Yeah, this. Do um, do you want to do MB proc or should we just do it on high pack? No, high pack. Okay. Uh, Logan, can we get high pack on uh, channel three? Yes, so you can. To use an analogy, if exactly. if Johnson Atoll was a a nodule or nu or a nugget, this would be a Semperella sponge. Uh, and it's kind of just sticking up straight north out of the atoll. What? Maybe attached to it, maybe not. But it, it's actually reminiscent of a Semperella sponge. Cool. That's quite an analogy. Steve, you took your glasses off. <laughs> yep. I can't see high pack without them. <laughs> it was time. So how far are we from Johnson Proper? I'm not Stand far. By. Uh, let's go for the middle of Johnson. So people, yeah, you can bring your glasses, but not your contacts. So you can come to my island. You can bring your sass and your pineapple if you want. You can bring them both. We, can, we could always have more pineapple. Y'all, I am so confused. Yeah, we're about uh, 22, 25 miles, Perfect. miles from Dawson Atoll. Does that work for you, Samantha? Uh, let's see. Yep, that's great. Okay, Lovely. so if you're watching on Channel 3, um, you can see a uh, high pack, which is the navigation software we use to plan our dives. Um, the ship is, is here at the top of this feature, and Johnson Atoll is, uh, is this feature here that um, has half contours. Steve, do you want to kind of talk through the uh, yeah. reasoning behind picking this spot? Yeah, um, this is a Kevin, Kevin Conrad special dive target. We actually picked this last year, so it's probably the lo most long, long planning <laughs> of any dive we've ever done. But we were weathered out of this particular dive last year, so we're going to plan on doing it this year. But uh, yeah, so the age of Johnson Atoll was what I I don't remember something in seventy-eight million years, something like that. Uh, uh, it's been published, uh, but this feature may be part of a different. Uh, hotspot uh, track that came through the area that just happened to be directly adjacent to or perhaps under Johnson Atoll. And so it's kind of created this um, auxiliary kind of uh, ridge off the northwest of the atoll. It looks different in some ways. Um, and normally we don't see seamounts that are uh, at right angles with atolls. Uh, so that's kind of suggestive of you know, maybe something else more complex going on. There's a region in the South Pacific uh, where using plate reconstructions, you can uh, backtrack a lot of these hotspots to, to a certain area. It's called the South Pacific Superswell. Uh, and it's kind of like a large igneous province uh, where it's thought that many mantle plumes have derived, uh, some from deep in the uh, core mantle boundary and others kind of branching off near the transition zone in between um, the upper and lower uh, mantle boundaries at 660 kilometers. So it's a really interesting area. A lot of these hotspots um, actually can be traced back there if these models are correct. So uh, it's, a, it's a very high priority target for that reason. Neat.
Uh, do we have any idea of what kind of formations we're hoping to find on this uh, slope and at the top of the mount? Um, uh, obviously, down on the deeper parts of the ridge, we'll look be sampling our usual suspects, the iron manganese crusts and, and basalts. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully more basalts than crusts. Yep. And uh, we'll see as we get up to the top, there seem to be two um, either scallops or, or potential uh, failures, wasting events uh, off the western side of this ridge, which could suggest that maybe there's other uh, surface structure to the seamount, like maybe carbonate, uh, but we won't know until we get up to there. Zoom in, we're about five minutes off the seafloor. All right, correction, Bronwyn, I'm so sorry to say you can't you can't come to my island with your bananas. Or your banana rack. Brutal. I know. Oh my god. Brutal. I know. She was already on her way. Yeah. So can I still bring my bubbles if I bring a pebble? Or can I still br yeah bring my bubbles if I don't bring a pebble? Sure. What's the goal of this? Is it to guess what the pattern is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but don't say it when you guess it. You just keep guessing, I and see. you just keep getting it right. I see. And then everybody else gets more frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the most frustrating part is when you guess and you keep getting it right, but you still don't actually know what it is. <laughs> Which is exactly where I am right now. Oh no. <laughs> this is definitely a waiting for the bus <laughs> after school game. Hmm. So the person on the chat can bring lollipops, but not candy, absolutely. All right, and then also somebody wants to know more details about that strange, uh, clear, football-sized animal that we got yesterday do you can you tell us a little bit more about that steve it is a tunicate most likely um but beyond that we really don't have any ideas uh these off you know it's often very difficult to um identify things sometimes on the seafloor uh when they're alive and intact because a lot of the records we have might be from fragments of things that were pulled up in trolls or dredges uh historically and so um, one thing, one way we could determine where it lies in the tree of life is a sequence, what's called a DNA barcode, and uh, that's something that could easily be done for only a few dollars uh, worth of supplies, and that helps us tell, helps tell us where it might be related to which types of tuning groups. Hmm. I think we're starting to pick up the seafloor on sonar. Nick, somebody wants to know what is your favorite rock fact? My favorite rock fact. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, curious about the viewer's man. favorite rock fact. Can we go for favorite rock instead? Only if it has a no. fact with it. Okay. Favorite <laughs> rock <laughs> fact. <laughs> uh, sure, you could you could go for your favorite rock. I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna okay, do sounds both. Good. So favorite rock is Eclogite and favorite rock fact is that eclogites uh, are chemically similar to basalts and gabbros, but they have a different mineral composition. So uh, they're found under high pressure and high temperature conditions and are associated with subducting lithospheric plates. Uh, so we see evidence for eclogites on the surface through accretionary uh, uh, wedges um, when some crust subducts, a piece of it will actually accrete on the wedge. Um, and you'll see these um, these rocks, which are really cool, uh, eclogites. And they're like this really nice green color with uh, garnets, red garnets in there. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool rock. And that's a rock fact. Is that a real <laughs> rock? That, in fact, is a rock fact. Yep. Very cool. And that's a real rock. It's a real rock. IRL. Yeah. Look it up. How do you spell that? E C L O G I T E. Wow. Eclogite. That's a 
that's awesome. Yeah, it's a really, really cool looking rock. Talk about yeah. sounding like a Pokemon. That's, that's great. Yep, yep. <laughs> Look at that cool rock. Uh -huh. uh, Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very rare. It reminds me of Christmas. Very uh, marbled. But again, it has uh, the same, the exact same chemistry as a basalt and a gabbro, but different mineral composition. And all that means is that you have different temperature and pressure conditions. So gabbro and basalt are same uh, same chemistry, same mineralogy, okay. uh, just different crystal sizes based on where they were erupted. Okay. Interesting. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Did you <laughs> did you see me Googling over here? Yes, I did. And spelling it atrociously. My, my spelling yeah, is I didn't see the great. spelling, though. I was like E. I was staring C at the cool pictures. L. It, it has a, a very high percentage of garnet. Okay, cool. Um, yes, chat person, you can bring butter, but no lard. You can bring a book. Oh, we have bottom. You can also bring churros, but no ice cream. You mm. can come to my island. I guess I'll just happily take my bubbles and yeah, be fine. But just. Just be happy that you can come. Yeah. You don't have to know why. It's fine. I am. Thank you. Thank you. 20. Makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> a little shallower than I thought. Bottom in sight. Bottom in sight. All right. Bottom in sight. All righty. So everybody online, we have me made it to the bottom. We're starting from the bottom of the seamount and making our way to the top. Can you reset the uh, DVL if that's okay with you? Okay, yes. That's where, that's my real position. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Beautiful <laughs> sponge. <laughs> Bluetooth hurt. Good sign. Sponge and That's corals. Good Great. <coughs> oh, we landed perfectly. Oh, wait. No, because we're going this way. Okay, we'll have to. We'll be going uh, at a bearing of 115. Actually, your heading will be 115, the ship's bearing will be 115. Can I bring marbles but no balls? Nope. You can bring balls, but no marbles. Can I bring trouble, but no snacks? Trouble? <laughs> <laughs> did you say trouble? Yes. Yes, no, I did. you can't. Dang it. All right. What about a VHS tape, but not a DVD? No, Steve. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't come on my island. That's charming. <laughs> Wouldn't though. want to. I couldn't watch either. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So far, who's on my island? I didn't want I an am. invite anyways. Gabby and Gabby. Samantha. I, I feel weird about the fact that bananas were allowed out there, though. No, I, I changed my mind about bananas. No, okay, that's I what, got, yeah, okay. Got okay, that's really what threw me off. Yeah, but then yeah. what I just tried didn't work, so. Um, what did you just try and bring? Trouble. Trouble? trouble? Yeah. Nope. No, you're not As allowed to bring like trouble. I wasn't allowed to bring trouble. Yeah, yeah no, that But I can bring bubble. Yeah, you can bring bubble. So, just so I don't lie awake at night, like, <laughs> contemplating <laughs> this, can you let us know by the end of the watch? What yeah, of the course. Okay. By the end of the watch. Of the watch. Yeah. Absolutely. Pretty, pretty yeah. hardcore. I have a feeling you all are going to figure it out before then, but, um, yeah, I'm not that mean. I can let you all know before the end of the watch. Can uh, I bring uh, Zoom, but not Skype? Yeah. <laughs> 
Good one. What? Don't bring, I, don't, I don't want that on my island, but you either. can bring it if you have to. If you Actually, must. I'll bring Zoom and Google Meet. How about that? Okay. <laughs> yes, they can both come on my island. <laughs> Can I bring a, a revolver, but not a lead, lead pipe? No. Okay. <laughs> Neither one of those. <laughs> trying some crossover game right here. <laughs> I don't think any of the clue weapons work on this island. Uh -huh. <laughs> clue weapons. <laughs> clue <laughs> weapons. <laughs> Free island. Is it, was there a book? Was clue, there a like clue of the game? You can bring yeah. your book. Book. Oh, oh, the book on the island? No, I'm just wondering if there was ever a book as a weapon. No, I don't think so. Okay. There was a library as a place to commit the crime. Right. Okay. Are we in Clue now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are. <laughs> can I bring a whale fall, but not an ocean? You sure can. Yes. Come on over to my island. So speaking of whale falls, I'm getting a question in the chat. How rare are whale falls? Um, they are pretty rare, to my knowledge. Um, I do know that we have seen What's some uh, around the Monterey Bay area, around California. Yeah, do we want to wipe out? I don't know if we've ever seen any whale fall out here in the Central Pacific, but oh. we have been finding um, manganese and crested beaked whale beaks, I think, that we've found four so far on this expedition, if I'm not mistaken. So those are definitely more common, those beaks from the beaked whales, um, than actual whale falls. <laughs> this is an excellent one. Somebody is saying, I can bring the fish boops, boops, or boops, boops. <laughs> and that is absolutely true. Come oh my gosh, you that. can bring it twice. Yeah. <laughs> bring it on over. I love that move. Yeah. That was I like that the chat can play this game. Yeah. That's really fun to me. I like that they're always around for our inside jokes, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> they keep them going. Really love it. They're here for it. Ooh, a fair number of corals here. That's impressive. Oh, and before we really get going, can we do a white balance team? Yeah, definitely. We're still, we're still swinging into the ship. Cool. Logan, would you mind walking us through how do you do your white bu your white balance process? Uh, I can. I could even do it while I do it if you want. Yeah. Cool. Oh, he's got a procedure written right I've there. I've got a procedure. Zeus Sitting ready. Plus white balance procedure. Yep. We've got checklists on checklists. We've got checklists for our checklists. <laughs> Straight from the protocol binder. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A balloon, but not a rubber chicken. Um, um, I think you could actually bring both if uh, you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get hang <laughs> you of should it. start <laughs> writing them down, Steve. Yep. I think I think you'll get your insight, the insight you're looking for when you write them down. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> a balloon and rubber chicken. He's gonna do a clown demonstration on my island. Yep. <laughs> The ones who keep their their heads, uh, <laughs> and, you know, heads in order are the ones who are going to survive. Yeah, got to laugh once in a while. Okay, <laughs> shall we? Um. Yeah. Uh, 115, or what did you say it was? The It'll direction? be 115, yeah. 115? Yeah. 115. Okay. Atalanta's heading is 110 right now. Can you work with that video for Atalanta lights? I can. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, I will do that. I'm going to tinker with the, some of the settings and our uh, clubs. Say when you're ready for me to put the arm out for a white balance. Ready. Oh, thank you. I was just going there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. And yeah, uh, porch lights on and lasers off, which I think I just saw you turn lasers off, so thank you. Yes. Giddy. Okay, uh, craft valve coming on. Yep. If you're happy. Yep. It is on. Okay, so yeah, basically our procedure is porch lights on, ROV lasers off, um, then we zoom in, fill the frame with white so that it's easiest for the camera to be able to look at it. Um, we focus. Chief. Okay. Now you're totally fine. Oh my god. Focus on the white tape. Um, and then we have a little pedestal level over here that basically changes the f-stops on the camera. So set that to about 80% because that's where you want the whites to clip at. Um, and then you tell the pilots that the camera is going to be capped in black for a short period. Okay. And then first we... Um, we set the auto black balance. So it's going to go black real quick. And the camera figures out exactly where black should be. And if it works, it comes back. There you go. And then when that is done, when you set the white balance, then it'll go bright white for a second, and then come back. Save that in the controller that we have right here. And we're good to go. Thank you so much. Okay, go wine. Cool, thanks, Logan. Yep. We got some viewers asking about it sometimes. So, Karen, I see you're using, uh -huh. you're using the sticks when you're in full autos. Okay. Um, you, yeah. uh, the impact of that is what you're doing is you're advancing the goal, mm -hmm. but the vehicle's never going to move faster than these max velocities here. Okay. So you're advancing your goal. Like, so when you do vert down, um, you'll vertical, it'll change the goal. It'll send it down and down and down, but it's mm -hmm. never going to let the vehicle move much faster than um, 0.1 meters a second, I think it is. So oh. it's like quite slow. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why it's hard to get a good response when you're in full autos. Okay, okay, cool. Thanks. Good to know. Yeah. So you can watch the XY page, uh, the auto XY page while you're doing that, and you can mm -hmm. start to see things happen there. Okay. Nice. Uh, Valve secure. Okay. Right. Okay. All good? Front row? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy. Great. Science, anything you want to do here before we start going? I'll want to rock soon, but uh, not quite yet. All right. Um, if that's the case, um, there are some corals. I just want to do some quick zooms just to establish what these are. They're very abundant okay. all over here, so any of these colonies. 
go, Vision. Uh, Steve, is this amount of time that you want here? Just for zooms. Okay, just for zooms. I can put in a move then. Mm -hmm. Great. Bridge now. And there's a fish too. There's a fish there too. Do you mind too. if I take bubble? Hello, no. we're at the sea floor. Uh, let's do three zero meters, one one five, please. Most of these are node branching bamboo corals, although I also see some species of norella in the area. Um, I have my trusty uh, right triclops cam back. Thank I'm you. Loving it. <laughs> you can see the norella right here in most imitating all of yeah, the other bamboos back. in the area. There we go. So this one is, that's a primnoid. Nice starting point. Yeah, do the chat wants to know, do we have an idea what kind of fish that is? Yeah, that is a grenadier, rat tail fish. Awesome. Probably probably Kumba. K U M B A. It's one of the more common Small, usually pretty small. I reset the GBL again. Works for you. This is a very nice uh, community, though. But it is. Some Chrysogorgia in the area as well, although no one's home. You can see on the left hand Go side, this is that large uh, bamboo coral colony. Go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, so viewers online, we do have the cinema cam back. Uh, if you want to go ahead and check out channel three, you can see some very, very amazing images from that camera. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, can we zoom in here just to see if there's I'll go for zoom. any uh, anyone home? Looks like the light. Looks to be one squat lobster. Maybe your Pecus. All right, that'll be good. Nice. Yes, chat, you can bring nuggets, but no nodules. You can come to my mm, oh. I love that. Very topical. <laughs> yeah, another one of the seafloor, all guesses have to be. Uh, yeah, they all have to yeah, be yeah. this. So you can bring a rat tail if you want. <laughs>